Hi everybody, this is Judy Baj with your town supervisor and welcome to our virtual Fun Day Monday series. In an effort to make sure that our residents stay safe this summer, we're adhering to strict social distancing guidelines and even our Fun Day Monday series has gone virtual. Our 2020 series might look a little different than it did last year, but we certainly hope that you'll continue to join us each week because there'll be new and exciting things each Monday. Fun Day Monday has grown to be a tradition for so many of our senior citizens, and I know I look forward to our Fun Day Mondays every year. With hundreds of seniors attending, we knew that once the pandemic hit, we wanted to continue to host our weekly events, but we needed to develop a plan where we could do this while making sure that our residents stayed safe. So I, along with our town board, worked closely with our Department of Community Services to develop some new and interesting programming for you. Throughout the summer, we will be providing our residents, you, with engaging and fun entertainment every Monday. You'll get to hear from our town board, our town clerk and receiver of taxes about their favorite Fun Day Monday memories. We'll have exercise classes, we'll have workshops, to tours of hidden gems in North Hempstead. There'll be something for everyone with our virtual Fun Day Monday. I hope that you'll join us each week. This week, Council Member Viviana Russell will take you on a walk down memory lane and talk about her favorite Fun Day Monday memories. We also have a cooking workshop and fitness class for you. So let's get this Fun Day Monday started. Welcome to the cooking lab. Uh, I'm Chef Matt and let's cook together uh, a nice braised chicken from the south of France. Uh, so to do this, what we need? You are going to need some chicken thighs. Now, what we'll do, I, I, it's important to have the skin on because the, the skin will release uh, some of the fat and that will be very uh, tasty. But what you need to do is pat it dry, very dry, because when we're going to cook it, you don't want the oil to start exploding everywhere. You will need about two cups of, uh, you can use tomatoes, diced tomatoes. Uh, if it's, this is canned diced tomato. That works very well. If you have fresh tomato, that will work very well as well. I'm using about half a cup of chicken bouillon and I will use half a cup of water. If you had a dry white wine, that would be great. If you don't, I'm, I'm using water and that will be just fine. You will need a little bit of olive oil, about the equivalent of one to two tablespoons. You will need about, uh, so if you have peas, I'm going to add peas, uh, one cup of frozen peas that I will use at the end of my dish. I'm using three cloves of uh, garlic. I will need about one uh, small to medium onion uh, that I will chop very uh, thinly. Then you will have some, uh, I'm using red, uh, green pepper it's just for the color because if I use red pepper with the red tomatoes, it's too much red. Now you're gonna have some nice colors. Uh, and then, for I will use a little bit of butter. You will need about one one tablespoon of butter. Uh, will will be great. You will need about a bay leaf if you have this gives a lot of flavors. Uh, some salt, some pepper. I'm using some oregano today. If you had some herb de Provence, that would be great. Uh, but any dry herbs will do the trick. A little time works. Uh, I'm using some garlic. Uh, though I'm using. Uh, clove of garlic, I always like to add garlic powder in my meat. Uh, onion powder, this is optional also. It depends what really you have. I like to add a little uh, onion powder also. Uh, you have some paprika. Paprika is really more for the color. When you saute your chicken, uh, it will give this nice um, 
red uh, coloring, that, that, that would be good. And then you have some cayenne pepper. Why cayenne pepper? It's because I like it a little spicy. So there we are. We have all our ingredients. Well, we, the only thing we need, the equipment, is uh, some saute, some kind of saute pan. You know, but you will need it uh, like this, a little, with a little depth because we will have some liquid in it. Uh, but that's about it. All right, so the first items we are going to do is the pepper. So the pepper, you see those nice little lines. You have the seeds inside. We don't want to bother the seeds inside, so we are just going to cut along the, um, the seams and very gently you take this out. The seed stays attached together. We are wow. now, of course, there will always be some seeds, and the membrane this you don't want to eat, so you just remove it nicely like this, and all the remaining seed, you tap in your little garbage bowl and you're all done. So let's do quickly this guy too. And, uh, and a little bit here. All right, now what we wanna do is cut everything very, very thin. So let's say, the example I want to show you, we're going to cut, so the way you hold your knife, okay, pinch it, nice. And I want you to cut little, little things like this. So it's a julienne of green pepper, okay? So you put it all together, have it sliced, one, two, three, you can put them on top of each other. Now the pepper brings really a lot of very nice Mediterranean flavors. You can use uh, all peppers, like all colors are good. I personally like to cook with red pepper, but a little bit of, uh, of green pepper will be just the right amount. The onion in this dish is going to provide a lot of good flavors too. All right, so we have our onion, uh, our red pepper cooked, green pepper cooked. Good. We are going to move it into a little bowl like this. And now we are going to cut our onion. Always use a dry surface, a dry knife. Now my onion, I'm going to cut it in half right where your root is. And I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to remove this little, uh, the outer skin, outer layer. And also sometimes you have this little film, just want to take it out, not because it tastes bad, it's just because it's slippery. I'm going to do the same right here. And the same thing, I'm I want to cut my, uh, my onion very, very thin. So. Make sure I clean this. Okay. So the onions, stay away from the root. You are going to very gently make a slice, okay? This way. You know what? Let's get it this way. I was going to get to dice it, but makes no sense. For this recipe, I like it to be julienne like this. All right. And then same thing this way. Now you see, an an onion, when you slice it like this, you don't crush, you don't juice, so you are not crying. Then finally, I want to use my uh, garlic. So the garlic, what I do is I tap it just a tiny bit, just enough that 
the skin is coming out. Oh, I didn't tap it enough on that one. All right. And I tell you what, I want to crush this garlic, so I don't mind if it goes into pieces. Come back here. All right. Now the garlic, this is also your best friend in the kitchen. It really gives a nice, uh, nice flavor to everything you cook. All right. And this garlic, like I told you, I will simply crush it because I want it to, um, I want it to release all the its juice in my stew. So I put this away. So I have my green pepper cut, I have my onion cut, I have my garlic ready. All I need to do is basically uh, spice my chicken. So let's spice the chicken. All I need is, so like I told you, you want it uh, nice and dry. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. So salt with chicken, you can go for it. White meat, you need always a fair amount of salt. Now I'm adding some black pepper. I'm going to add a little bit of my onion powder, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. So I have about one teaspoon. So again, uh, I don't want a half a teaspoon, I'm sorry. I don't want to put too much because I want to keep it to season the other side, of course. Here is the garlic, a nice little bit of garlic. And I have my paprika. This is for the color, remember? This is going to give a nice, a nice color. So far, everything is about half a teaspoon. So I didn't, okay, that is, so one quarter teaspoon on one side, one quarter teaspoon on the other side. I have my uh, herbs, oregano, dry oregano. If you have herb de Provence again, this is great. And finally, I have a little bit of cayenne, my cayenne. So the cayenne, you don't put too much okay because that's very, opa, like this not good i don't worry too much because it's the skin i'm going to turn them anyway so it's going more flavor my my, my uh my oil it's all good now i'm turning my chicken and i will repeat the same a little bit of salt you want to season a little bit of the black pepper. You will add, I'm going to add black pepper after when I put it on the, uh, on the pan because I already have a fair amount of cayenne. I just don't want it to be too spicy either. Well, the garlic, be generous with the garlic. Chicken likes garlic and salt. And then finally, uh, your paprika. And I have my herbs. All right, so my chicken is nice. I, if, if I feel like I have not enough, you can do this like this. You put it back on the skin side and I'm going to saute it first on the skin side. So we'll do the skin side first. We're going to give it a nice color. Then we'll turn it, we'll, 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 uh, we'll brown uh, this side and then we will take it out of the uh, pan and we will, uh, we will start cooking our vegetables. So, I'm going to wash my hands and let's cook the chicken. Okay, so it's cooking time. We are going to pour over medium heat a good one and a half tablespoon of olive oil. What you want to do is uh, coat the bottom of your pan. Now, the other thing you need 
is about a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to cut it in little pieces like this, so it's going to melt a little faster. Now, I start having some bubbles as soon as, so I'm just stirring the butter around. And as soon as my, um, my butter is melted, I am at the right temperature to start searing my chicken. I'm going to use these utensils to manipulate everything today. It's just easy, I love this. You can work away from the oil. Now, it's boiling, we have the right temperature. You grab your chicken and you are going to put it skin on first. Now, the reason, remember when I told you we need it to be very dry? It's because of this. As soon as you put something that's kind of uh, humid, the, water, the, the, the fat starts splashing around. We don't want that, okay? So I told you I will put a little bit of uh, black, extra black pepper. Here it is. And we are targeting a nice color. At that point, my friends, you should have a nice smell coming out of this pan. This is the magic between olive oil and butter. The combination is extraordinary. Now, you are looking for a nice golden color. So this is not there yet, but it takes about, you have to count about one minute. Now, again, you have two cups of uh, canned tomato. First, we are going to use about half a cup of chicken bouillon, uh, half a cup of water. Have everything in hand. Then I have all my vegetables. Now, I'm reaching out a nice color. I don't want it to burn. I just want it to brown it. You see, at the bottom of my pan, I start seeing nice little brown bits. This is, this is the good stuff here. So we don't, we leave it alone. Now it's going to brown on the other side for about a good solid uh, minute. And what you will do is have a plate like this with a border because we are going to remove our chicken to start cooking all the rest of our ingredients. But you want a little border because it, the chicken it might release some uh, juice, so you don't want it to be a mess. So a little plate, and that does the trick. Checking on the chicken, looks very nice. The oil has the right temperature. So this is a great uh, dinner, but it's a stew. So what you can do also is prepare it and eat it for the next day. So if you have some guests for the next day, the stew, it's always better reheated. All the flavors are combined. So this dish can definitely be prepared in advance. All right, now I have uh, this nice beautiful color. I'm going to take it out. Very nice. Very nice. Now, in it, I'm going to add my onion. And all I want to do is soften the onion. It's going to create a little more bit brown at the bottom of the pan and that's okay now you always have liquid handy because if you need it to stop if you see that it starts being uh, start burning turning black well you don't want that to happen so one way is to just throw in a little bit of water and up it stops everything and of course reducing the heat now I have a good heat. I have 
nice bowl. Now look, my onion start to be uh, to soften it a little bit. You see, so when you reach that point, I'm going to throw in my green pepper. Hmm, that starts smelling good. I like that smell. That reminds me. You see, I don't need to travel. I'm in the south of France right now. I grew up watching my grandma preparing this dish. I was, I was privileged to get in the kitchen because usually she didn't like to have anybody in this kitchen. So now my pepper, you see, I keep on stirring because I, I just don't want it to uh, burn. And at the same time, if you see my pan, I can remove some of the brown bits, okay? I want, at the end of, at the, end of the day, I want this, uh, the bottom of this pan to be extremely clean. Now, everything starts looking good. I'm happy. Now I want to add the flavor. So I'm going to add my chicken stock. And I want to reduce it at least by half. So I'm going to um, bring up the temperature to high heat, very high, because I don't want to stay uh, looking at this, uh, this uh, liquid reduce so when you put it on high heat now you see those big bubbles it's going to take about another 30 seconds to one minute now at that point if you had uh, many brown bits stuck this is when you start uh, scrapping the bottom of your sauteed pan and make sure that all the good stuff It, uh, doesn't stick to the pan. Okay, so now I arrive to. I'm going to show you the about the thickness that we are looking for. It's not. It's it's juicy, but you want it to be kind of. You see, it's it's juicy, but it's not watery. Okay, you want it to thicken just just enough that you are ready to add now the uh, a bit of water all white all white wine so if you had white wine great if you have water that's just good enough again we stay on high heat it's going to reduce nicely now you will need this juice you will need the liquid to cook your chicken so don't feel like there is too much liquid here but what we are doing is fully cooking those uh, onions and red pepper now at that point i'm going to add my two cans of no, one can, my two cups of tomatoes. Ah. My chicken is ready to go. Again, still on very, very high heat. All I need to do is bring this to a simmer. At that point, I'm going to add my crushed garlic. That is going to infuse in the juice. I'm going to add my bay leaf. So the bay leaf, I'm just going to crack it in half. I'm going to put one end here, a little piece over here. Now remember, I did not put any salt quite yet. Uh, I season my uh, my ingredients. I mean, uh, I will put just a tiny bit of salt, but I want to put 
not too much. I will, I will uh, rectify the seasoning if needed when the sauce is about to be ready. Add a little more black pepper. Now, if you felt the need to add a little more of dry herbs, you can add a little bit more. I feel like another half a teaspoon will be great. But again, the seasoning can always be rectified at the end. Okay, so now we start reducing. I have a nice simmering going on. I'm going to add my chicken back. And I'm gonna try, make sure that it's submerged as much as possible. I want the flavor of this liquid in my chicken. Voila. Not too much juice, but I have anything I have. This is the good stuff. Okay. And now, all it takes, you want a, that little simmer to go on. So we are going to simply reduce just a tiny bit the heat, and we are going to cover it. And we will cook for about half an hour. Let's see in half an hour how it looks like. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. Let's see this chicken. All right, so this is what you wanna do. First, you wanna make sure that this chicken is cooked. So what you look is at the bone. You just wanna make sure that it's not red at all. This looks perfect. So now I'm going to transfer my chicken into my serving plate or platter. And now I'm going to try to reduce this sauce. I want the juice, I want this sauce not to look like a juice, but I want this sauce to look like a sauce. So let's thicken in this. Now you have to watch out because at the bottom, I want to make sure that you have no brown bits stuck. So you clean up quickly. Let's reduce this for about five minutes. And because I have some peas, I'm just going to add my peas around. Look at this. It's gonna bring some beautiful color. I'm mixing it a little bit. Let's reduce this for five minutes and let's see how it looks like. All right, this is the end. So first you are going to fish out for the belly because this is not pleasant to eat. You just make sure the bottom is nice and clean. Take, as long as there is liquid, all the brown bits uh, will stop out very easily. Now, I'm just going to, just before I take it, I want to make sure I taste this sauce. It's perfect. I'm off. I'm going to gently put this sauce over my chicken. A little bit like this, a little bit like this. And my friend, you have here a nice braised chicken from the south of France with some peas, with some colors, peppers, onion. Bon appétit. Hope to cook together very soon. Welcome to a walk down Fun Day Monday Lane. I'm your host, Christina Liu from Project Independence, and my co-host today is the fabulous John Ryan, who everyone knows as our radio <laughs> show uh, host. And you can listen to our Project Independence and you radio program every Friday from 10 a.m. to noon 
on WCWP 88.1 FM or an app or whatever it might be, whatever your mode is, um, but it's lots of great information. And today we are privileged because we have with us the fabulous Councilwoman Russell. Thank you for joining drum, us. Drum roll. I know we need sound effects, I think. <laughs> so how are, how, how's everyone doing today? We're doing good. We're enjoying summer. We're glad to all be yeah. here, and especially with you and doing this virtual Fun Day Monday, because um, it's certainly a different way of doing Fun Day Monday, but we're still trying to make it possible. See, the proper answer it, it, is, now that we're hanging with Viviana, we're all doing great. That's right. I like uh, it. John, you, listen, John, you need to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being charismatic. <laughs> So the Fun Day Monday program has been going on for 30, over 35 years now. And I want to know, Councilwoman Russell, what is your favorite memory of Fun Day Monday? So my absolute favorite memory of Fun Day Monday was, um, I would have to say it had to be about five or six years ago. Um, I was able to dance with Mr. Balcourt. And so I am an avid dancer. I love dancing. And I could always depend on Mr. Balcourt to dance every Funday Monday. And so I remember we, I was trying to teach him the electric slide. <laughs> yeah, he was that. very good at doing all of the other dances, but trying to teach him the electric slide. And he was a quick learner. He did very, very well. But I would say that was probably one of my most favorable memories of Funday Monday. Oh, I, I, I absolutely, and I absolutely miss him. I really, we lost him recently and um, I absolutely miss him. I really, really miss him. I miss my dance partner. So I'm putting a call out. There it is. Everyone <laughs> Sunday, Monday. I am in need of a new dance partner. That's right. Uh-oh, the call center. You need volunteers? volunteers? The call center right now, I think. <laughs> I hear it. I hear 311. <laughs> yes, call 311 if you want to sign up to be my dance partner. That's right. Um, <laughs> I love it. So I was, uh, yeah, that was my actually, most favorable memory. Um, but I, I enjoy Funday Monday, you know, as a whole. It's an opportunity to see all of our seniors throughout the town, not the ones, you know, just in my district, but throughout the town. And everyone is just so friendly. Everyone is having such a great time. I think it's a great program that the town is able to do. And it's just been fantastic. It's been really fantastic. No, people definitely enjoy it. We have another question for you now, Viviana, and that is, mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with, uh, with Funday Monday. What is a favorite memory of you in the summer? Now, that could be now with your kids and your grand grandchildren. It could be when you were a baby. Makes no difference when it is. Something that always comes to mind when you think of summer. When I think of, sum of summer? Summer, yeah, someone. when you think of summer. No, summer, when you think of summertime. What's oh, summertime. Really oh, God. Oh, wow. I remember doing that. I remember going to the beach. I think my family went to the beach every <laughs> single weekend growing up. And every, when summer hit, school was out. It would be my family, my aunts, my uncles, all of my cousins. I kid you not, maybe about 50 of us. <laughs> and we would be at the beach from the crack of dawn. Sometimes I remember leaving my house before the sun was up. And we would be there until about eight, nine o'clock at night. We spend the entire day at the beach with the entire family. And it was just a lot of fun. We were in the water, we got to play and spend time with family. So that was the absolute best. Uh, and and so now I'm trying to recreate those memories. I have two grandchildren now. Right, and so that. I'm trying to recreate those kind of memories for my grandchildren and my children. It's so important to try to keep the extended, not grandchildren are not extended, but to keep the family together like that. To wind up with that oh, yeah. to go into the beach is phenomenal. It, it, and we did it, it seemed, I really, I kid you not, it seemed like every single weekend. I could not understand how my parents did it once I became an adult and tried <laughs> like packing up just my kids and then coordinating with my brothers and sisters and their family and just doing anything. It took a lot of work and then packing food for the entire day. Right, right. Incredible. My parents were amazing. <laughs> amazing. I love it. So great. So Viviana, what is something that no one or any of our listeners may not know about you? A hidden talent or some kind Ooh. of passion they might not know about? Ah. Oh, boy. We got that one now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a couple of things. So 
Um, I think people already know that I, I love to dance, and I used to dance um, semi-professionally for, for a little while. Um, I love to sew, and I love to write. I love to write. Um, I've been working on a book for, I can't even tell you how many years, maybe like four or five years I've been working on a book. And so, um, yeah, so I don't think, I don't think many people know that. And the more people that I tell, the the more they're holding me accountable to finish it. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't have an answer to that yet, but um, but I have been working on it for some time, and it just seems like as life goes on, there's more and more to add to it. So um, I think that's something that people just didn't know. Oh, we're gonna well, have something to, to have, look forward to. We're going to have yes. to have Viviana on the radio specifically about the book. I know oh, we can God. introduce her as author. <laughs> exactly, I love it. I love it. Mother, yes. yes, and that's how you yes. spur somebody on. If she's on the radio yes. talking about her book, then it's like, Viviana, where's this book we heard about? I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I have to tell you that during this COVID, you know, pandemic, you know, we've been able to spend a lot more time at home, and I've been able to spend some time working on it. Although it seems like I'm busier than ever now with the COVID pandemic, um, I have been able to spend a little bit of time, a little bit more time focusing on it. You know what? Good. What you just said, I mean, just because you're home and not running to the office every day doesn't mean life is easier. There's parts of it that are actually much more stressful. There are parts of it that are wonderful because all of a sudden you realize you had an extra hour to spend with your husband or your grandkids or somebody that you didn't have normally because you had to go to a meeting at night or you had to go to a fundraiser or something. But it still is not easy. There's no question about it. This is stressful times. Um, very specifically yeah. just for health. You get nervous, you know, just for yourself to go out and about, you know, it, it's a hard thing to do. You got to be very careful. Um, yeah. But during all this, is there anything going on? And I'm sure there isn't, but we always like to double check in your district during the summer. Um, I mean, it, it, again, it's, it's very difficult to come up with everything. So we're saying that right up yeah. front. Um, <clears throat> programs. I mean, that's why we're virtual with everything at this point in time. Yeah, so um, the governor announced um, about two weeks ago that it was go he's going to be opening back up the parks and that day camps were allowed to be open. And so we do have a day camp at the Yes We Can Community Center that will be opening in August. Um, and so we've had some people ask, you know, why August? Why not the beginning of the summer? Um, but because of the pandemic, um, there's a, a lot more that needs to be done to make sure that people and kids stay safe. So a lot of procedures and things that we have to put in place, and it's going to take time to train our staff on the new procedures in order to have them ready to, to effectively take care of these children. So we put it off until August. Um, looking really forward to it. I know a lot of parents are looking forward to it. Um, we have a lot of things going on virtually, like this program. I know Project Independence has a lot of virtual programming going on. Our town board meetings are continuing to go on virtually. Um, here um, in my district, we're starting to work with the school districts and trying to get um, drive-in movie nights um, up and running. Um, we started them in other parts of the town, and so now I'm tasked with working with our school districts because we don't have any um, parks in my district that are large enough to facilitate a drive-in. So the next big thing is to work with the school districts and other um, private entities to get those up and running. So I'm excited about that. Our drive-ins have been um, sold out. They are free, but they have been completely booked up, um, the ones that we've had thus far. So that's very, very exciting. And then we continue to work on some of the projects the Long Island Railroad is continuing to work on their projects in my district. Um, I've had five projects of all the projects that are going to be happening with the railroad. The main ones have started in my district. And so I had the Car Place train station, which is still ongoing. Um, and then Urban Avenue, the, um, the bridge elimination. And so that one is completed. They're working on School Street now. Um, it's a lot of disruption to the community, but I think overall at the end, everyone will be pleased with the product. Um, I just ask everyone for their patience and bearing with them as they go through this. And if you have any complaints, call your state elected officials because it is a state project. The town has been doing an excellent job working with, um, with 3TC, Long Island Railroad, and the community. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's a state project. And so I 
ask my constituents to please, please contact your state representatives if there are any issues that you see is not getting done. Um, our hands, you know, are proverbially tied in some instances because it's a different entity. Um, but for the most part, the projects are coming along. Um, they look great. And, you know, we're looking forward to them being over and us being able to utilize our neighborhoods the way that we were in the past. Well, that is wonderful. And we look forward to all this and, you know, to what's really to come. And we want to thank you, Councilwoman Russell, for being with us today to share this stuff and, you know, giving us these fun little tips that we didn't know about you. So enjoy yes. the rest of your summer and be safe. And we look forward to having you uh, on our show when your new book comes out. <laughs> oh, I love I'm it. excited. <laughs> well, just a little bit of pressure. Not too much pressure. Just a little pressure. <laughs> And well, I just want to say something in reference to Viviana and like what she's talking about with the projects. You know, they are state projects, but that's not the point. Viviana is always there for her constituents and always helping out. And that's a credit to you. You don't pass the buck. You try to help the people yeah. as best you can. You can't answer the questions 100%, which it makes sense because you're not running the program, but you are there for the people, which anybody listening to this and watching this, because this is going to be both... Uh, audio and visual, uh, have to realize that you're very lucky to have uh, Viviana over there watching out for you, 100%. Absolutely. Thank oh, you, thank you, Council you. Russell. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And to all of our seniors throughout North Hempstead, I hope that you are really enjoying your summer. We look forward to seeing you when we're able to come back in person again. And please stay safe and stay healthy. Terrific. Thanks, Viviana. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Good morning, everybody. My name is Margaret. I'm here to do a dance fitness video for you for Monday, Monday. Make sure you have some water. Make sure if you need to take breaks, you take breaks. And if you need to modify, modify. Let's go.
little drums. Check your hair. Play a little drum. Yeah, so we're in a seated position, squat position. Push the back. Two, three, four, one, two. 
hips. Swing those hips. Beautiful. Up. Up. Pull your toes back. So if you need your water, grab your water. Pretty. Let's bounce. Bounce it out.
job. March it out. See those birds? So we're gonna continue with the side to side. All the way up 
had a great time joining us for this week's virtual Funday Monday. I, along with our town board, our receiver of taxes and our town clerk, thank you for allowing us to join you in your homes, on your TVs, and on your computers. We hope to see you again next week.